Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday. Finally made it here to the weekend. October 8th, well, almost the weekend, right? October 18th, 2024, 11.43 a.m. California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.0 there across Texas. I'm guessing and betting this is going to be out in the oil fields here of Texas. A couple of threes coming in, it looks like, in the last few minutes. We check out the satellite view out here. It's right next to a massive amount of oil fields out here. Goodness, and wastewater disposal ponds. Now that's a lot of activity out here across the area of the uh, Permian Basin area, it looks like. One of the largest oil operations out there. I was out there earlier this year, and just miles upon miles of oil fields. And that's what's going on out there in those oil fields, earthquakes. And, of course... Uh, the uh, North American plate out here, almost always under stress and strain, even inland away from the plate boundary. So these areas that have been poked and holed and bored into and withdrawn gas and oil pumped back into wastewater. Well, they, uh, see, they see earthquake activity. And that is the future of Texas. A lot of earthquake activity in store for Texas and any other oil fields out here that have not been hit. Last 30 days of earthquake activity in Texas shows about 545 earthquakes out here. That's actually a fairly minimal amount compared to months that we have seen here in the past. Sometimes that can get up above a thousand, even a couple thousand in terms of earthquake activity out there. So that's fairly minimal. But that's where the earthquake activity is picking up right now. As far as West Coast goes, of course, we had that earthquake out past the Cascadia subduction zone, just shy here of the mega thrust area. From last night, uh, no new adjustment going on out here across the area of Oregon, Northern California, uh, or inland. We had another earthquake up here. Uh, this is going to be associated with the northern edge of the Juan de Fuca Ridge, uh, spreading seafloor center out here, 3.1 from late last night. So that earthquake followed this one here, which uh, was a few hours earlier. So we had a, a little bit of adjustment taking place out here last night. But since then, uh, there's nothing showing up. One earthquake here in Northern California, 2.0 outside of Bernie. That's uh, There's a couple different fault systems up here. At northern edge of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Bay Area, fairly quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. Southern California, one earthquake on the Garlock Fault Shear Zone here, 1.5. Very shallow earthquake um, at the surface level, it looks like. A couple smaller quakes here near Avenal as well. Extreme Southern California. Looks like any typical day down here right now. Really nothing major going on. Uh, a couple earthquakes here in the Los Angeles area. One of those looks like it's on the um, Puente Hills Thrust Fault. 1.7 from uh, yesterday. But really nothing, uh, nothing of major value going on well i shouldn't say value val major interest right now across the uh, california area looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity so far today 5.4 earthquake going to be the largest here near the izu trench now earlier this morning well let's see here this was following that event interesting uh one of the latest quakes I should show on here is going to be this 4.5 into the Volcano Islands area of Japan, 89 miles deep. Most of the time here, when we see um, these deeper quakes triggered into the subduction zone, we'll see follow-up larger events. But this is opposite here. We've seen a shallow event. Uh, that looks like it added further strain down dip. But ultimately, we should see some adjustment out here following this deeper activity. It just kind of makes sense there. This is a little backwards, but tells me right here that things are uh, could, could be getting a little active in this area. So we'll keep an eye on that region. Southern end of the Izu Trench, just off the coast here of Japan last night, a 5.1 coming in as well. About 39 miles deep here into the Japan Trench. Out here in Hawaii, not a whole lot going on. Uh, still getting a little swath of earthquakes stretching out towards the Loihi Seamount. And that is obvious here in the last week of earthquakes. Today, a little bit of movement down here as well. Relatively deep, though, about 17 miles deep underneath this area. Not uh, anything of any major interest going on out there for now. Alaska area, handful of smaller quakes. Really nothing big going on there. 
2.5 map and above shows uh, some twos and threes out there. Some from yesterday, some from today. Uh, let's see what else we got here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Middle America Trench calming down slightly after a couple days of increasing seismic activity. Goodness, we've seen a lot of earthquake activity out here uh, earlier yeah, I should, earlier this week, midweek or so. Uh, also across the area of Dominican Republic, looks like a few earthquakes going on over here around Puerto Rico. Some twos and threes, latest a 3.4, really close here to the Puerto Rico Trench. South America area, typical movement going on down there, twos and threes. The Atlantic Ocean, really nothing nothing going on to even speak of. A little 2.7 out here across the plate boundary. Triple point junction, quieter out here across the Mediterranean today as well. Uh, looks like for the most part, uh, elevated seismicity is uh, consisting here across the area of Taiwan southward through the Philippines and uh, in the typical crunch zone, I say that uh, because that is uh, just what I like to use, a term for the crunch zone, because look at all these plates here. The plates in different colors, the arrows pointing in the general direction of the plate movement. Out here across Taiwan, southward, Japan area, Java Trench is the crunch zone, kind of where all the uh, plates tend to subduct um, and just come together. It's a very interesting area. Uh, but it sees a lot of earthquake activity on any given day. So it's just average out there right now across this area. But we will watch the Izzy Trench over here. That's some interesting activity with the deeper uh, and the surface adjustment taking place there across that area. New Zealand, couple threes down there. But even so, this region looks a little bit quieter here today compared to the past couple days. All right, got anything major going on in space weather world? Let's check it out. Right now, goodness, I think we're entering into a little quiet period. Let's see what we got here for magnetic structure. Really, none of these, uh, this area is, is a active area, but it's about ready to pop off here, the western limb, and be out of sight, out of mind. We're left with a whole lot of unorganized sunspots out here with huge separations in between the magnetic cores there. That one as well, this area, yeah, there's not a whole lot here, folks. Uh, solar flare threat's going to be fairly minimal until we see what's coming around the eastern limb here. Uh, there's another active region, but it doesn't look all that um, fancy for now. Let's take a look here at the far side sun watch. There's that area. This Okay, so this is from yesterday one day ahead which would be today that area right here this is the far side area this is the eastern limb so this region is ultimately going to be let me show you guys here real quick going to be this area right here because we're a day ahead this is the 18th this far side is from the 17th so this is a kind of a weak measly sunspot that's now visible the area of interest is going to be 3842 3844 now these were sunspots that were out here on the earth facing side uh, a week or so back and it's a fairly large massive area uh, we're gonna have to watch here I'm, I'm not hearing anything of any major far side explosions but just looking at this shows a fairly large active area and uh, it'll be visible here shortly um, you know coming up behind this area in a couple days so we'll watch that those are former sunspots that were over here like I said, over a week ago, they'll be coming back around the bend. They'll be coming back around the bend here as a newly named sunspot area, even though they're the former sunspots that were out here. But it looks fairly active, at least looking at this graph here. Don't really have too much to go for in terms of complexity, but coverage, they look quite large. So there is your flare threat, 10% uh, chance. I think that's being a little elevated but that could be because of the active area out here on the western limb but once that's gone then that should go down until the other threat comes around m flare at 60 percent chance c flare around 99 percent chance or so no major auroras in the forecast here folks for now and uh, that is um, it's gonna be a slow time here at least for now 
and space weather activity until we get uh, some more sunspots facing the Earth. Far as uh, let's check out the asteroid approaches here. See if we got anything of interest here headed towards the planet. That's a fairly large uh, asteroid, stadium size. Goodness, yeah, you wouldn't want that coming in to the uh, planet, but safely. Uh, it's passing us at over 4 million miles away. That's expected today. Uh, here's a little bit closer one, 40-foot bus-sized asteroid. Really nothing of close approach there. That's still considerably uh, a safe distance. And the rest of these, as we can see here, uh, fairly far away. But there's obviously, you know, many, many other asteroids out there that we're always catching and discovering. But for the ones that are being monitored, it uh, looks fairly safe for now. As uh, far as anything major goes out here across the, the uh, weather world, got some cooler temperatures out here in California with some wind stirring up right now. But uh, let's see here. There's our next storm system coming in towards the end of October across the West Coast. A couple of storm systems there. Looks like the storm door may be open out here across the West Coast. And that... Uh, is great. I don't see any signs of any hurricanes out there across the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico. That is good. Some type of tropical system down here in the eastern Pacific, well south of the California and the Baja California region, but uh, not seeing that anywhere near land. But that's good. Uh, I'm ready for some, uh, well, it's actually pretty nice. I had my sweater on this morning. It was quite chilly this morning with the wind. And um, I'm loving it. I love the fall weather. Let's see what we got here for temperature-wise. Thermodynamics here. This shows us where temperatures will be above average and where they'll be below here in the uh, purple, above here in the bright red. So this weekend here, Saturday, maybe Sunday as well, a uh, little bit of heat building back in here to Northern California, upper 80s, I think, which is not too bad compared to 100 and 104 what we've seen earlier this month a lot of above temperatures here across the northern plains and into the uh, great lakes area look at that massive high pressure going to be building up here with well above averages we're talking about maybe looking at some of these charts here 16 to 18 degrees above normal here uh, for the folks out in the northern states and uh, portions of southern canada cooler temperatures behind that much colder so you get a little bit of swinging in the temperature gauge there uh, and then filling back up here for high pressure again as we head towards october the end of october california cooler weather coming in with some rain chances there and um, again i'm a cooler weather guy and i like the looks of this so bring it on aside from that folks uh you know looks like yeah again looks like the storm door is going to be open over here across the west coast Massive area of cooler weather, which is all right with me. I got to figure out what's doing that, causing my um, my internet, not internet, but the browser here to freeze up temporarily every like 30 seconds or so. It's a little suspicious, if you ask me. There's all that cold air coming down here to California. I'll take it. I will take it. Thank you. All right, I'm out of here, folks. Have a good one. Seismograph stations all quiet and clear for now. But, um, you know, just be on guard. Just because we've got a little quietness right now doesn't mean it's over completely in terms of elevated activity. Southern California here, we should see something kick up here pretty soon. It's been, it's been a couple days, I'd say about a week, maybe a little bit longer than a week now since we've seen any elevated seismicity events out here across Southern California, you know, compared to the past couple months here where we've seen fours and even a five-pointer and various swarms out here across Southern California. It's calming back down for right now, but uh, let's not let our guard down. It's a weekend. Enjoy it. Have fun. And uh, we'll catch you guys back out here for the Friday night update. Stay safe out there, folks.